So today's Father's Day and uh, most of my buddies aren't able to ride today so I'm riding solo. Decided last minute to do a Joplin. Joplin Trail is a 5,000 foot climb. So uh, I just got the range extender. This is my second ride. Um, range extender is uh, adds 252 watt hours to the uh, to the 360 battery. So you've got uh, a total of 612 watt hours. Now, the range extender was about 600 bucks and it comes with a nice uh, water bottle cage. Very solid water bottle cage that works with your standard water bottles as well. So I've been riding in, I would say about 75% boost and the rest of the time trail mode. When it's flat or very light uh, incline, I'll be in trail mode. Uh, rest of the time, I'll be in boost like right now. It's not even that steep, but uh, I do want to get home in a reasonable hour. So yesterday, uh, I took this bike with the range extender. I did three downhill runs on three separate trails. And what I've noticed was it was a lot uh, different. That, that added uh, 3.4 3 pounds or so, or 3.3, 3.4 pounds, made a huge difference in terms of how the bike felt. Um, didn't feel quite as playful or nimble anymore. Uh, the weight distribution changed slightly. Um, I felt like there's a little bit more weight up front uh, than normal. Um, so it, it changed the right char character of the bike. Um, it's leaning towards more a how a full, fight, full fat bike feels rather than uh, how an acoustic bike feels. With the range center removed and uh, it feels more like a uh, acoustic bike. So uh, there is a definitely a penalty uh, for adding a range extender on how it feels. People say, oh, it's only three and a half, uh, a little over three pounds, what's the big deal? Well, three and a half pounds on your body uh, feels very different from three and a half pounds on your bike. The way this range extender works, uh, it, it, uh, the bike uses the power from the uh, range extender first before it even touches the uh, main battery. So right now my watch says uh, I'm at about 70% battery remaining. That 70% is the total, okay, uh, of, of the range extender and the, uh, the, main, the main battery. So as soon as I drain, oh, actually as soon as I reach around 58, 59%, that means my range extender is toast. It's done. So basically what you do is when you hit 58, 59%, you can take out the range extender, put it in your hip pack, and then your bike, uh, once you turn it back on, is back to 100%. 100% uh, of the main battery. I had a ride on it uh, yesterday for the first time, and uh, you could feel that weight. Uh, the bike handles a little bit differently. It brakes a little bit differently. Um, it just, uh, you notice that extra weight. Um, you don't notice it on most trails, but uh, on steep, tech, loose, uh, gnarly trails, you can feel the, uh, the weight difference. Uh, right now, um, I'm about, uh, oops, I'm about uh, 1,678 feet uh, up so far, and uh, almost six miles, and I'm at 71% uh, battery remaining. As soon as it hits about 59%, that means the external uh, uh, removal battery is uh, drained. So um, bike feels totally different uh, with that uh, battery removed. So um, what I decided to do is right here is I'm go I have this uh, Osprey uh, Savu um, hip pack. So I have my water bottle here, which is good enough for a uh, 5,000 foot climb plenty of water because you're on an e-bike. As soon as the battery is drained, I'm going to slip the battery into this pocket. Uh, that way I put the weight on my body rather than the bike and that's going to feel a lot better descending. It's going to feel like back to normal. I was concerned yesterday because the bike lost a lot of its playfulness after after yesterday's ride. It um, it felt more like a, uh, uh, it felt closer to a uh, full fat bike uh, than it did a uh, uh, acoustic bike. With the battery removed, it feels more like an acoustic bike. Um, I just returned from a trip from Kernville. Uh, I did the canal plunge. It's uh, 
it's a it's a close to an 8,000 foot descent and uh, I had significant brake fade so since my last bike check I upgraded the rotors to these uh, um, Frieza rotors uh, 203 up front now these Frieza rotors a 203 Frieza rotor feels like a 220 uh, um, uh, a standard rotor because of these aluminum fins that are sandwiched in between the steel plates that really keeps it cool um, so I got the uh, 203 up front and I'm good with a 180 on the back now I hope this stays up <laughs> oh shoot I'm a little concerned about this on the descents so um, I ordered um, the proper rotor uh, but it's not here yet so I just put a couple magnets together uh, temporarily uh, just just so I could uh, uh, test out these uh, rotors for this ride uh, so I put two magnets they're kind of sandwiched together so that they attract um, and it's working so far uh, and I just put a little extra zip tie there just in case um, uh, so far so good uh, I haven't descended yet I hope it doesn't fall out during my descent that's gonna suck okay so my battery is at uh, 57 percent so that means my uh, radio extender battery is done well here's the battery now the problem with this battery is uh, the contacts are exposed okay um, there's no cover for it uh, so when you put this into your hip pack um, dust and water could get in so what I recommend is to pack a a little Ziploc bag like I do here like I have here you just slide it over and then just stick it into the uh, the uh, one of the pockets okay so the range extender goes in quite easily into one of the uh, pockets here and then there's a little strap here that you can just slip over right here there's a little step right here on the right on the range extender you put a little strap here to, to secure it in place it's not going anywhere um, if you want to lighten the load on your back, you could put your water back on the bike if you want to. All right, I'm at a spot called Four Corners. It's where a bunch of the trails meet. Yeah, it's uh, warm and sunny out today. Pretty hot. Uh, it's about 90 degrees or so. So uh, 918, so I better get going. All right, I'm about to descend the Joplin Trail. I've got about 50% uh, of my uh, main battery left. All right, I'm at a spot called Old Camp. I guess people used to hike all the way up here to go camping. Here's a setup right here. Um, my sensor, on um, my magnet sensor that I uh, uh, jerry uh, jerry rigged uh, came off. So I'm running this air. The the good thing is uh, I still have uh, plenty of battery left, 43 percent. Ooh, I made it. The light is still flashing red. I actually have full control of my uh, bike. I actually have full control of my bike with these buttons. Even though it's flashing red, I could go eco trail, boost, walk modes, off. I could still do all those things. Uh, so what I did was I just had a magnet right here. Magnet sticks right to this point right here, right to one of these bolts. Sticks right there. But I went ahead and added a little bit of super glue in, uh, behind it as well for extra reinforcement. And now it's uh, it's pretty solid. You can't, it's really hard to move that magnet. It's pretty much stuck there. All right, so in two days, I did 10,000 feet of total uh, climbing and descending. Uh, 5,000 feet of that is uh, today with uh, the range extender on my back when I descended. 2,500 feet was with the range extender uh, physically on the bike. And another 2,500 feet of it is with the range extender uh, removed off the bike and in my car. So basically uh, running just the internal battery. So the $600 question is, is the range extender worth it? Um, if you asked me yesterday, I would have said no. Um, I did not like the weight on the bike at all. Uh, we were doing laps, so um, after three laps, um, I was able to put the range extender back in the car. Uh, and do uh, and do an additional uh, three laps uh, uh, without any weight, and it was a night and day difference. Um, and and I, I was actually regretting buying that range extender because I felt like um, you know it, it wasn't worth that compromise. But after riding today with the hip pack and being able to put the 
brain extender inside my hip pack. Um, I felt that uh, that shifting that weight from the uh, the bike to uh, my, my my hip pack made a difference on how the bike handled. Um, with that said, I now believe that the range extender is worth it, especially on longer rides or when you're short on time and you want to get a ton of uh, climbing and a ton of descending in in a short period of time, uh, which means you're boosting the majority of it, then it's definitely uh, worth getting. Well, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll try to reply to them in the comments. Like, subscribe, and uh, see you later. Bye.